London. Beautiful weather here, as you can see behind me, the beautiful ocean. It's a very uh, beautiful morning. It's a bit slow, though. Um, people, I think, that they're taking advantage of the fact that today is a public holiday. So uh, we haven't seen much activities around here. But uh, voting is continuing very well in many, many parts of our province. Uh, people are continuing to vote. We haven't had any serious incidents of uh, uh, intimidation and disruptions that have taken place but uh, it's still a long way ahead and I can tell you that uh, also on the uh, across the Kai River here in the area of Transkai uh, where Nelson Mandela uh, was born in the in the in the village of Mveso his great grandson has actually voted there and he's a born free he was voting for the first time we're going to bring you those pictures a little later on but also the premier of our province as well, Mamunokolo Kivit. She has also voted at a local school uh, this morning, and uh, we just want to show you those pictures now as she was casting her vote. East London citizens brave the cold weather conditions to exercise their democratic right. Mostly elderly citizens made their way to the voting stations in the early hours. Premier Kivit urged the youth to come out in numbers. It is of utmost importance that our people, especially the young people, come out and vote in numbers because this is your future. Um, this is a very, very hard won right, um, which is almost a birth right of every citizen. Monitoring that all goes well in the Buffalo City Metro is a delegation from the AU and the SADC countries. Olu Tusota, SAPC News in East London. All right, now we're going to cross over to the northern uh, parts of our province in an area of Queenstown. That's where we have deployed our reporter, uh, Unati Bingose, to be our eyes there to see as to how are things going this morning. Unati, tell us, uh, have people woken up this morning to go out and vote? Indeed, they have, Tommy, the voting stations opened shortly after 7 o'clock. I mean, they did not open at 7 o'clock on the mark. There were some slight glitches here and there. However, they did open. And by the time they opened, there were already queues of people ready to cast their votes. It was largely elderly people and a lot of security guard officers. I suppose they were coming back from night shift, wanting to make sure that before they go off to sleep, they do cast their vote. We are at um, Lungisi Township at Kenjana Hall. This is is the biggest voting station here in terms of numbers and the queues are beginning to show that I mean uh, people are streaming in to cast their vote and earlier on when we spoke we said that uh, it was mainly elderly people who were coming in but now we are seeing quite a few of young people coming in as well to cast their vote which is very encouraging I mean uh, earlier when we, we we were complaining that uh, uh, young people were nowhere to be seen and what we've noticed here at this particular voting station is that elderly people the frail and the disabled have been allowed to skip the queue and go straight inside and cast their vote. However, despite all that, the number keeps on growing and we expect the numbers uh, to continue picking up as the day progresses. Back to you, Tami. All right. Thank you very much, Unati, being also giving us an update as to how is voting uh, going in that side in the northern part of our province in the area of Queenstown. Now, I'm joined here now by the provincial electoral officer uh, here in the Eastern Cape, Udadu Tamim Khaji, just to give us a sense of how the IEC is preparing uh, for uh, the day today. Tamim Khaji, good morning. And how are things going uh, in the province this morning? Uh, so far, it's a bit hectic, uh, but uh, all our voting stations are now open. We started with a few challenges where the roads to the voting stations were blocked. For example, where the number of roads in uh, Sterkspray that were blocked, uh, but uh, those obstacles were removed, and then they found that the locks have been changed, but those have also been uh, broken, and uh, the voting stations are operating as normal now we, and um, we had such a challenge also in uh, Engobo where there was some community protests but with the intervention of subs that has also been resolved now and uh, the same at the school in um, in the Mtata area that has also been resolved so
We started a bit uh, with challenges, but at the moment we are all, it's all systems go, we are working. Now we've had reports that uh, the, uh, the EFF in Stuxbury has actually uh, launched an objection with regards to the ballot boxes that were found there with ballot papers already uh, inside as a voting station open there in that area. Can you explain how, how, how that happened? Oh yes, I am aware of that objection. What happened actually is that uh, the ballot boxes that were used for special votes, in terms of the law, they must be taken to the voting station today so that those ballot papers can be integrated into the today's ballot uh, boxes so that they can be counted together. Those are the ballot boxes which are at the voting station with ballot papers. They are sealed and the integration of those ballot boxes is actually going to take place in the presence of the party agents. And uh, so it's a normal legal uh, uh, thing that is happening, but it's just that unfortunate that uh, the EFF is not aware of that. Just briefly in terms of the rural areas, we know that uh, uh, there's always a challenge of infrastructure in those areas. How have you prepared to make sure that people in the rural areas where the, the roads are very bad, sometimes there's no electricity in schools that are being used, how, are they, how, how have you prepared for that? Uh, we have prepared, we actually uh, even took a, uh, firstly we had arrangements with the provincial government in terms of their voting station infrastructure uh, to attend to access roads, but we have also as the IEC procured 4x4 four four vehicles uh, for the rural area so that the, vo the, the staff can access those voting stations. But uh, there are voting stations, for example, three in Mbashe, which are completely inaccessible. We have hired helicopters to deliver the material at those voting stations and also will make arrangements for the rollback of the material from the vote those voting stations. Adam Khaji, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All right. That is the provincial electoral officer here in the Eastern Cape, Dr. Tami Mkhaji, just giving us an update of how things are going this morning. Now, we're going to cross now to the western side of our province. That's where our reporter, Janine Lee, is standing by to give us an update as to how are things uh, proceeding that side. Good morning, Janine. Good morning, Tommy, and um, I can report good news from all across Nelson Mandela Bay. In fact, there were concerns initially from the IEC. They identified a number of hotspots. In fact, I'm standing at one of them, and it's nothing of the sort, luckily to say. I'm in Silvertown. This is one of the poorest areas in Nelson Mandela Bay. It was identified by the IEC as a hotspot where there might possibly be problems today, but nothing as yet. I've spoken to my colleague, Lerato, who's in Cook House, also identified as a hotspot. Nothing happening there except voting, which is good news. And also Utenag. There were a few incidents of tyre burning last night. That seems to have been cleared up and voting's going ahead as usual. But let's get back to Silvertown where I am today. One of the poorest areas in Nelson Mandela Bay with the last census and during the registration weekends um, registration was boycotted so they weren't sure that many people would vote. But over 1,400 people here on the voters roll. You can see a queue behind me. This queue has been steady since before 6 o'clock this morning. There were old ladies camping outside the gates here of the IC. They were on their chairs. Some of them were sitting on buckets, but they made their way up the short hill. And the tent behind me has busy ever since the, has been busy ever since the polls opened. And some really nice stories. I've seen people coming out of this tent behind me. They've got a mark on their finger. They've half-fived each other, so they're happy to be voting. And we've also just heard. I've heard from my colleague in the the Transkei area that Mandela Mandela will be casting his vote at Mvesa at ten o'clock in Vezo at 10 o'clock this morning and we've also heard that uh, the late former president Nelson Mandela his great grandson who is a born free he's going to be casting his boat with chief Mandela Mandela there at 10 o'clock we've heard from other parts of Nelson Mandela Bay that there are long queues there were initially hitches with some of the scanning machi machines but all these things seem to luckily have been sorted out it's a bit rainy this morning but um, it hasn't stopped people coming to vote and the IC tells us here 
here in Nelson Mandela Bay, that they think they expect things to pick up a little later in the day in areas that are particularly quiet. They're saying people are, are making the most of the public holiday and having a bit of a lie in, but they are confident that people will come out and mark their, make their eggs a little bit later today. As you know, the polls stay open until nine o'clock this evening. But yeah, in the hot spots, luckily to report, Tommy, no incidents of everything and things are running smoothly. And as you see behind me, a steady queue of voters here in Silvertown, which is good news because these are the people that really need change. These are the people that don't have water, they don't have lights, they don't have electricity. In fact, just to my right is a tap. It's a communal tap. And I spoke to a woman earlier. She came up with a bucket there to open the gates for her. She came to get water and she told me she had more than three kilometers to walk back to her house with water. So voting for change here in Nelson Mandela Bay. Tell me. Right, tell me, Janine, one of the key elements of these elections are really the vote of the bond freeze. Uh, have you seen any young people perhaps on the queues already? Uh, what are their, what their, their feelings about uh, voting today? You know, in the lead up to the election, Tommy, I spoke to a number of born frees. Um, they were eager to vote. They were aware of the past, but they wanted to concentrate on the future. Strangely enough, today, the majority of people in the queue are elderly people or older people. I see a young man here. Maybe he's not. He's not even looking at. Maybe maybe he doesn't want to talk to me. That's a young lady. Hello. Good morning. Um, could you just share with us? Just just turn this way and have a look at the camera there. What are some of the things? What are the changes that you would like to see? Just one or two. The houses a better place to stay because it's very filthy here. Yeah. And um, so you've come up here today to make your your mark. How, how do you feel personally making that cross today? Uh, it's very it's very nice. Yeah. Are you it's proud? Up, yeah, I am. Oh, good. Just to put my vote my vote here. Excellent. There you see some thoughts of the people who have come up um, to make their mark today. Um, but Tommy, interesting as I said, many elderly or older people today, perhaps the young ones, as I said, are maybe sleeping in a bit late. Um, maybe they partied last night um, because it's a public holiday today and they'll be out a little bit later. Let's hope that we will see them. Tommy? Thank you very much, Janine. That's our report there in the Nelson Mandela Metro on the western side of our province. Uh, Janine Lee giving us an update as to how things are shaping up uh, in Port Elizabeth. But we also have been able to go around, uh, talk to ordinary people just to find out as to how are they finding uh, this day. Let's, let's take a listen to this. Well, voting means um, voting for the country that I love, um, changing this country around for the better. So it's drama, especially today. So we want to in in longer to vote. We want to see what I'm planning. Nobody calling on 94. Nobody calling a pambi on 16. Don't do. Into a bad leg lay. In longer less in now. Nobody move fast. Nobody move in dot. We're just basically making our mark today. For democracy. Mm -hmm. Elaborate. Well, if you don't have your say, you can't moan about it in the future. And that you can be the change that you want to see in the country and that you can choose in the, 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 the political party that you want and that you can see um, raising the country in the free um, in a rainbow nation country and um, black people, white people coming together, colored people coming together, everyone coming together is very important for us. Well, those are some of uh, the residents of the Eastern Cape really expressing uh, their feelings and their views about uh, voting today. Well, that's all we have time for uh, at this point here from the Eastern Cape. We will continue updating you about developments as the day progresses. For now, it's back to you, Eben, in Pretoria.